Evidence from early Christian sources like John of Damascus and others supports Dr. Stephen Shoemaker's argument that Abdul Malik is the creator of the Quran as we know it today. Yeah, well, this is this is kind of interesting because my colleague uh, who is working with me in our MAPI program, yeah, Dr. Daniel uh, Janasik, Janasik yeah. he he did his doctoral thesis on John of Damascus, and he right. comes up with the same questions that Shoemaker comes up with. You know, kudos to Dr. Janasik; they are they're on the same page, and he asked very much the same questions. If you have John of Damascus writing about the heresy of the Ishmaelites, and doesn't even use the word Muslim. By this time, Muslims should be well known. If that was introduced by Muhammad in the 630s, and now we're a hundred years later in the 730s, where he's writing this uh, heresy of the Ishmaelites, why is he still calling them Ishmaelites? That's not their name. That's unless, right. of course, Muslim had not been introduced. And why is he talking about this text that has material in it that is not part of the Quran, uh, if the Quran has already been canonized? If the Quran had been canonized at the time of Uthman, then certainly John of Damascus, he's, he, his father was, his grandfather was part of the Caliphal courts there in Damascus. His father was part of the Caliphal courts there in Damascus. He was part of the Caliphal courts there in Damascus. He's right there where this is all happening. He's ha so he's an eyewitness. And he's having this disputation. And now we're into, he's, Abdul Malik is now dead. Uh, 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 you have, he's now writing in about 730, Abdul Malik died in 705. So we're talking about 25 years later, he is now writing against this book and he's disputing this book. But look what he says. It's, he's talking about a chapter that doesn't even exist in the Quran, the camel. So you can see this is a real problem. Well, Shoemaker takes us on board and says, no, this is the this is proof because the Quran is being put together at this time. He's actually bringing out material. He's actually confronting, not so much, he didn't think that the book had been, he didn't know it had been canonized either. He's just confronting what's in front of him. And he's right there where it's all happening, right. not way down the Hijaz. So let me just give you some quotes here. Louth says this here. John includes Mahmud's followers. So he does reference the name Mahmud. Mahmud, the name now was, had been introduced uh, by 730. So uh, we were talking about oh, getting towards the mid uh, 8th century, whom he considers to be little more than another variety of Christian heresy. Listen, right. if they're a new religion called Muslim, then how can you call them a Christian heresy? And that's what John of Damascus' position has always been, that Islam is just a heretical movement out of Christianity. And it's an Ishmaelite movement. Right. So Luth brings this up. Folks, this is pretty clear that we're not talking about a complete new religion created and introduced by a complete new man with a complete new book in a complete new place. This is obviously, they see it as just another Christian heresy which is pops up all the time. Our whole history of 2,000 years has been heresy after heresy after heresy. Shoemaker says that this Muhammad, as was sent, composed many foolish things, many foolish things according to John of Damascus, and gave each of them a title, such as the writing of the women, that's Surah 4 that we have in the Quran today, while there are other writings with the title such as the table, Surah 5, and the cow, Surah 2. Yeah. So yeah. he's referring to, so these are almost separate writings. Obviously, this is being put together, brought together, in, as we said earlier. De Primera uh, talks about this, says, in his refutation of the Ishmaelites' faith, he describes certain writings that they attribute to the founder of Muhammad, some of which clearly correspond to the Quran and others of which do not. John's description of women is not compatible with the surah of the women. So even though the title is the same, it's not the same material in the, the surah of the woman that we have today, which is surah 4. John mentions a fourth piece of writing, the camel of God, that's not even in the Quran. Foot, listen, if the Quran had been canonized 60 years, on this case, uh, almost 70 years uh, uh, earlier, no, uh, we're talking about 80 years earlier, because we're talking about 730. If it had been canonized in 652, we're 80 years into it, how in the world is he still talking about a surah that didn't even exist, if it's not in the Quran today? Unless, of course, that surah did exist in 730, and it was not a canonical, canonical Quran that we have in our hands today. That's true. That's right. Let, let me play the devil's advocate for a second here. And, and, and again, I'm not trying to uh, d discredit what he's saying or argue with you, but it's quite possible that the surah, to, uh, the, the woman's surah that he's talking about here, it could be chapter 65, which is uh, the divorce one, because it's known as the abridged woman. It's quite possible. I don't know if he got into these kind of details. And it's quite possible that the camel is another name for another surah. I mean, let's, let's, I want to just, I know how Muslims are going to anticipate these kind of arguments coming, uh, you know, from them. So I just wanted to throw this out there. But the problem is, 
Now you have to prove it that that's what John of Damascus was talking about. Actually, well, I'm not going to even say how I'm going to answer that because that's yet to come. Because we're you're going to find that even almost all of these do, do come from antecedents. And we know where those antecedents are. Mm -hmm. And they're not from Abdul Malik. They actually predate Abdul Malik. They actually predate Uthman. But I'm kind of giving it away, so I don't want to give it away. This is all Christian lectionaries and hymns from much, much earlier. And stories, some of them Jewish, some of them Ethiopic, some of them even Zoroastrian but many of them Syriac tradition. But that's yet to come. That's yet to come and may not even get into these episodes. We have yet to do that. Now, so Shabler, uh, another scholar that Shoemaker quotes, he asks this, is this a different Quran is what he's asking. Clearly, we must conclude the sacred Ishmaelite writing that John knew in this era and describes in his account of their beliefs cannot have been the Quran as we know it in its present form. And I would suggest that's a very good conclusion. Yes, we're looking at a complete, uh, not a completely different Quran, but certainly not the Quran we have in our hand today. So obviously this is a precursor or it was a reflection of what then later became or beginning the antecedent or the nascent Quran that we now have today. Now, in the next episode, I want to zero in on the, uh, on the camel of God and the cow, those two surahs, because we need to unpack those a little bit more to understand why these are so problematic. It'll somewhat answer your question as well. Wonderful. And of course, uh, if people don't know anything about John of Damascus, just Google his name and you are going to come across a number of his writings that are available online. But I highly encourage you also to buy the book by Dr. Daniel Janosik about John of Damascus. Damascus. He did that book based on his dissertation. It's an excellent book. And John of Damascus, by the way, has been a, a very vocal apologist against Islam. I mean, in fact, if John of Damascus is living today, he will not survive getting captured and beheaded based on what he said. But back then, it shows that even the Muslim Islamic community back then, which weren't called Islamic, uh, they were open-minded. I mean, they, they were willing to accept criticism and they were debating the issues rather than uh, to be dogmatic about it, including the fact that even the Quran as we know it today, early uh, Islamic scholars, let's call them Islamic scholars for the sake of the argument, really did not take these rigid stands when it came to the creation of the Quran, the composition of the Quran, and also the contradictions or variations that are found in there. So hopefully uh, you will find this series that we're sharing with you to be very helpful in your own research. And if you're a Muslim watching this, we encourage you highly to go and inspect those sources. In fact, we encourage you to go and buy this book. In fact, reach out to me and we will send you the link to where you can find this book. In fact, we may do this, uh, Dr. J. We may have one book uh, as a reward for someone down the road. Uh, maybe we'll have a, uh, you know, um, uh, some sort of a... You can actually uh, just get it on Amazon.com. It's exactly. right there. It's yeah. easy. Just pull it down. Amazon is almost all over the world now. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Until next episode, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.